Welcome back, everybody, to some more Grand Tactician, the Civil War. Great news. Uh, they have announced kind of a preliminary look at what the next patch is going to be. It's about a week away, and it is going to address the very issues that I have been experiencing that have uh, long troubled my attempt at this campaign. Here's what it says. Upcoming patch, currently a work in progress, ETA one week, rebalancing the 1861 campaign scenario, unit steps, AI recruitment, and commander management. A list to be enhanced by fixes and minor improvements. Uh, I will say, I've said it before, I will say it again, these developers are fantastic at listening to what everyone is saying about the troubles they're having and quickly addressing it. We've been getting patches every couple of days, it seems, and pretty big ones too. The game's tremendously more stable than it was. It's got a long way to go, and we all understand that. Uh, but once that is addressed, I feel like uh, we will be able to do a proper 1861 campaign. Uh, and what's going to happen is we're going to finish this campaign. We're going to try to take this all the way to the end of the war as best we can. Even if he just runs out of men and we just march through everything, just so we can see what the end looks like. Because I believe there are different ways it can end. It's not just a cookie cutter, you win the war, that's it. There's different things that can happen, my understanding. I haven't seen any of those yet because I haven't played a campaign all the way through, but... So we'll do that, uh, and then we'll try an 1861 Confederate campaign, and we'll, we'll be doing this for a long time to come. So um, I have all the patron units caught up, uh, and when we do a Confederate campaign, I'll probably reach out to all of you again to see if any of you want to change what your uh, unit is for a Confederate campaign or keep it the same. Uh, and I do have a couple of new patrons that have joined just in the last day uh, since the last episode. So please reach out to me and let me know if you have a unit that you'd like to see included in the game. All right, as promised... We're going to try to get a massive uh, battle going with the Army of the Potomac, if possible, here. So uh, we're going to start by moving the 5th Corps down to Winchester because he pulled Stonewall Jackson back toward Richmond, uh, which leaves Winchester wide open for the taking. And then we'll go ahead and start moving William Tecumseh Sherman's Army of the Potomac down to Fredericksburg. Meanwhile, we are going to go ahead and move the Mountain Department into Charleston to occupy them now that we've defeated the Army of East Tennessee. We do have an issue here where now he's headed toward Grafton. So I think what we're going to do is we'll shift Banks' 5th Corps from Winchester. And we're going to bring our 3rd Corps under Heinzelman down to Winchester to take their place. And it seems that's where the Confederate Third Corps seems to be going. Oh, here comes Stonewall Jackson. Uh, he may be in for a bit of a surprise with his 10,000 men uh, with the Army of the Potomac, 105,000 strong. Now, they're not all with the Army of the Potomac. We've got all of our corps moving down, but I don't think that's something Jackson wants to get into. I don't know why he's leaving so much of his force down here. Meanwhile, over in the West, it seems that the Confederates are scattering. They have basically given up on Nashville. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, cut Grant loose, let him head toward Corinth, which is where historically he would have been going at this time. We've just passed when the Battle of Shiloh would have happened. Uh, and then he marched on Corinth from there, but he also had the Army of the Ohio with him for that. I'm going to keep them in Nashville for now. Send the Army of the Mississippi down to Memphis, and we're going to start trying to occupy and control the Mississippi River. Mexico Mexican intervention escalates. The British and Spanish withdraw. Napoleon III vows to conquer Mexico. British intervention is actually at 70%. Now, that's certainly not ideal. We do have six blockades going on. At some point, we'll have to push inland and try to take New Orleans, places like that. What are they trying to build here in Ironworks? I just got word that Burnside's Coast Division is withdrawing in the face of a much larger enemy. Uh, I, and they're down here outside of Norfolk. The only thing I can figure is that that must have been Robert E. Lee down there with the main part of his army. Here's the Army of the Peninsula. That's about 13,000 men. We've got Hill's Corps right here. 17,000 men. The Battle of Hatteras has ended with the Fort Hatteras garrison retreating in panic. So, oh boy. Not a big deal, really. Oh, that's the Army of Virginia. That's where Lee's army went? All oh, 35,000 men under Johnston. That's right. We're not dealing with Robert E. Lee yet. 
Why has he got his army down there when I'm marching on Richmond? What are you thinking? So one of the main reasons that the early efforts of the Union failed, in addition to some weakness in the Eastern commanders, is that uh, early in the war, and actually up until Grant took command in 1864, uh, the Union was divided into a series of geographical departments. Uh, so there was the Department of the Ohio, and so then the Army of the Ohio was the military force that represented that department. The Army of the Tennessee represented the military department of the Tennessee. And all of these different departments had commanders who had geographic borders in which they had control. And they all act, acted kind of independently of one another. And so what Grant did, uh, the real genius of appointing Grant was that you had one guy who was now in command of all of those departments and he understood the need to move them all simultaneously. He put Sherman in command of all of the departments in the West. And so he had control of all three of the main bodies of forces, uh, of troops, the Army of the Cumberland, the Army of the Tennessee, the Army of the Ohio. Um, he moved those together. Grant moved down the Shenandoah Valley, uh, the Overland Campaign, up the James River Peninsula, uh, up from New Orleans into... Um, Mississippi and Louisiana. Uh, these all were coordinated so the Confederacy couldn't bounce troops from one place to the other. You know, after Gettysburg, for example, Lee sent Longstreet west and then ended, he ended up fighting in Ch at Chickamauga and then he brought his troops back east. They couldn't do that anymore when they were being pressed everywhere at once. That was one of the reasons why the Union was finally able to win the war and that's why I'm going to win it early is because I'm doing that now. It's something that they should have done in 1862. All right, it looks like the Army of the Potomac is actually engaged. I don't know what we're waiting on here. It's not going to let me actually fight this. It's not giving me the option to fight, probably because I don't have enough troops engaged in it yet. The Army of the Potomac by itself isn't actually that big. Uh, there's only about 8,000 men present with the Army. Everything else is in the core. So we've got to get those core down here and quickly. Okay, we've taken Fort Pillow, Fort Darling, Richmond Falls, just like that. <laughs> well, that's what happens when Lee decides to take his army on a little jaunt down to North Carolina and leave Richmond completely undefended. I guess he didn't think I was going to do that. Now he's going to have to attack me to take it back. It didn't really push British intervention one way or the other. Let's see what it did to Confederate national morale still higher than mine. Of course, we gave him a big bump. I gave him like a 50-point a bump to morale at the beginning. So it's going to take a lot more than taking Richmond to win this thing. Okay, here we go. Jackson's Corps of the Army of Virginia is in contact with your second corps of the Army of the Potomac. What are your orders? Let's do this. We'll see uh, how much we have in the way of any reinforcements that come to the sound of the guns. But this is going to be the Battle of Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay, so it says right now 26,000 men for me and 11,000 for the Confederacy. But the load screen said I was facing 40,000 men under Stonewall Jackson. So that tells me that he's getting reinforcements. They're just not here yet. So we've got an opportunity to take on part of the force, but not the whole thing. And this is also our very first time playing on the Chancellorsville battlefield which is basically also the wilderness so this is going to be a place that's tough to fight because we're not going to see much and we're facing what will probably end up being a severe superior force so we're onto the second day already and you can see now that the morning report now shows 24,000 men for the confederacy uh, that number is going to continue to move so i'm trying to get myself into a good solid spot uh, that I can defend against what I expect will eventually be higher numbers than my own. Well, as I'm getting into position, I can see now uh, some advanced units for the Confederacy. I've got uh, Farnsworth's cavalry as my only cavalry brigade, 1,200 men with this uh, corps. So I'm just trying to send them out and trying to scout and try to figure out where the Confederacy is. But I'm building my battle line right along this area here. Looks like we're about to start seeing action. 
All right, so it looks like this is where it's going to happen, and we've only got, uh, looks like, Blinker's division over here. Hopefully we can get them in a better position. We're going to get them along this road right here. I do have a battery there. Lewis Pond's 12-pounder Napoleon, so we're going to get them, try to get them up on some higher ground, and then we'll start bringing Israel Richardson's division over in support and then probably have to do the same with with stone's division but there are ways off on oh, that's sedgwick's division stone's the uh artillery division commander and he's with that unit of artillery there so we're gonna have to order the the artillery independently that's kind of how i have designed this because it makes it a lot easier to make your battle lines with the divisions if you don't have artillery in the battle lines and then I just operate the batteries independently. All right, this is going to be a mess because he's got a much bigger force in this spot than I do. So we've got, let's see, we've got Boland's Brigade here. Von Steinwehr uh, with the 2nd Brigade. And Stahl's 1st Brigade. They're well armed, but they're still getting in a position. Oh, what are you doing? Bolin, get over here, please. Everybody else is okay. All right, hold on, Sumner. We're sending help. That unit that was crossing in front's going to probably break right away. Richardson's on the way. I want to take a look and see who are the brigades that we've got here. And we do have an advantage in number, an ever so slight one. So we do have uh, 9th Indiana Hazen's Brigade VMI cadets are in the 2nd Division. Now the 1st Division looks like just uh, standard units. And let's check the 3rd Division real quick. Nope. So those are the only ones that are in this core. Hopefully we'll get them into action here soon. Oliver Howard's brigade right there. I mean, Thomas Maher, who uh, eventually, um, he was in command of the Irish brigade. So I guess that means, yeah, here's the VMI cadets right here in gray under James Barnes. And then that's the 9th Indiana there. So they're kind of our reserve at the moment. They're going to be coming in last. Man. Hand-to-hand -hand combat right off the bat. We're going to need iron will for these guys. Because they're going to need it. Same with Stahl's brigade. Iron Discipline, that's what it is. I don't know why these guys are stacked up like this. Oh, these guys have lost 500 men already. They're not going to last. Oh, here comes the fun. Oh, we threw back Rosser and Russell already. That's impressive. Oliver Howard's there. Oh, that is the Irish Brigade. Okay, cool. Under Maher. We'll let them get into position. He's going to turn my right. I'm not even going to try to mess with the aligning of these brigades. I'll let Sumner do that himself. Oh, Sumner's the corps commander. Blanker's the division commander. Uh, is he... Yeah, he's got initiative allowed. We're gonna have some trouble with these guys, though. Alright. Let's give... So I've found that if you give 
an order like this and then you just give the advance order, uh, it, it's a bugle command and it happens almost instantaneously. Whereas if you give a standard order, you have to wait for that order to be relayed. Oh, he's trying to get that artillery over around my right. All right, so Sedgwick's right here in position, but I think we probably need to move him over here, and that's not gonna be an easy place to move him. Actually, let's cancel that order, because we're gonna have to do it this way, and it's gonna take a while. If we hold control to do it, then we can, no, 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 no. Okay, so, Let's do this. Who we got here? Bowen. We can get in behind these Confederates here and drive them off and then hopefully stabilize our line. Irish Brigade's doing well so far. They just started engaging. Let's see what the numbers look like. Let's go all the way back up. Alright, so far so good. Seems like that's the case most times, is that we do better on the casualties than the Confederates. And I think part of that has to do with better equipment, but also better tactics. All right, once we drive these guys off, oh, that's a Stonewall Brigade there. Drive them off, we can hopefully come deal with this. We do have Sedgwick coming in. I think, actually, we're going to go ahead and change Sedgwick's orders. We're going to go ahead and bring him on my left because I think I'm going to be able to deal with this. We're, we've crushed the Stonewall Brigade and Fulkerson, which means now we can cover ourselves on the right a little better. So let's get Stahl's Brigade over here. Just covering the right flank. are facing a little bit there. Let's get Howard to shift his focus. Uh, let's see. Long range fire. I want you guys focused on who's in front of you. Not really engaged at the moment, but that's okay. How's the Irish Brigade doing? Excellent. Irish Brigade. Give me deadly volley. I can't wait to take on the Confederates because I feel like it's going to be a tougher task, especially once they get everything worked out with the recruiting. So even though these guys are gray, those are American units. That's the VMI cadets. It's one of our patron units. Getting ready to see action for the first time, along with the 9th Indiana. Man, listen to all that fire on the line. Man, he's exposing his flank to me here. All right, boys, you got this. Third Brigade's well on their way to Iron Discipline Level 2. They've lost 800 men. They definitely need that Iron Discipline. That's 30% casualties. General French, wounded in action. I'm going to give them iron discipline also. Oliver Howard's about to get his first perk. There it is. Only one casualty so far for them. Deadly volley. So some of the Confederate units are starting to withdraw now. Irish Brigade lost 200 men. And it looks like we're ready. To engage with our last division, Sedgwick. Let's go ahead and give orders to... 
go ahead and engage in long range fire. I'm gonna bring Dana's brigade up around here and see if we can get at that battery. The Stonewall Brigade recovering? Looks like they might. What's the casualties look like? Wow. 2,500 for me, 6,500 for him. That's a lot in one core. I mean, that's 28% already. Once we smashed those first couple of units, he was done because now I have the opportunity to get on his flank. Yeah, you can see when you hit that advance order, they pretty much obey instantly because that's a bugle call. Now Sims realizes he's in trouble and he's got to back out. Okay, we just lost our first brigade. That's uh, that's French, and that's the unit that uh, lost their commanding officer. So it's not entirely surprised that that happened. I don't know that my artillery is in range. These are ten pounder parrots. We really need to get them up. artillery back anywhere else, did I? Nope. Ooh, look at all the dead there. We've got to watch because if any of his units actually recover, they could become an issue for me. I don't know that they will. He's pulling back now. Keep up the fire, though. Oh, Farnsworth's back here. That's why I'm able to see what's going on so well. Hey, Blinker, bring up your whole division. Good job, Oliver Howard. They've had one of the better days among my units. Only 16 losses. Let's get down and get a look at these guys. There's our VMI cadets all in gray. This 9th Indiana here, yep. Just out of range. We need to get them in a little closer so they can keep up their fire. I should have given an advance order there and I didn't. Alright, let's... Oh, there they go. They're moving anyway. How's the Irish Brigade doing? 382 casualties. They've lost almost half their ammunition, so they have had a steady fire. All right, Dana. No, you know what? Let's let the 9th Indiana take this bat take out this battery. I think they can do it. Give them a charge order. All right, boys. Take that battery. Actually, it's a battalion. It's not just one battery. Come on, 9th Indiana. Haven't lost a man so far. There we go. Take that battery. Beautifully done. We can actually take those cannon now, I think. Yep. Haha, <laughs> look at that. Chambers detachment. In command of artillery. All right, he just slammed into Blinker's division. But that's a victory. So there we go, 9,000 Confederate casualties for D.H. Hill. He never did get Stonewall Jackson's reinforcements up. Uh, 3,200 casualties for me. Good day, a real good day. I'm happy with that.
Due to his battle honors, Brigadier General Dana has become famous and an inspiration for his men. I love now that they have, and this was in the latest patch, they added these uh, hints and tips on the screen. As you can see right there, the weather is dynamic based on real meteorological data. The weather fronts move and the weather is not universal across the map. Poor weather makes the soldiers miserable and it is a good idea to avoid military operations during the winter months or in bad weather. When encamped or in winter quarters, the men do not suffer from winter changes as much as in the field. Glorious victory at Charlottesville. Should be Charlottesville. Uh, Jackson's Corps fleeing in panic. We never even saw Jackson. It was only a portion of uh, his men. General Dana becomes a national hero. Colonel Rosser loses face. Uh, so, yeah, see, it says there Confederate Jackson Corps, 40,000 troops, but he never got all those reinforcements. We were able to beat him before that happened. Uh, I want to see who those uh, commanders were that were involved there that got the praise and the infamy from that one because I can't remember exactly who they were in command of. So let's find the Army of the Potomac. I guess I should have gone the other way, huh? Okay, so we're looking at Sumner's Corps right here. That's who was involved in that. And so Dana is right here. This is the 3rd Brigade. Uh, they had a really good day for themselves. And I guess who they say was the one who didn't do so well. I don't know, but I got to show you this because uh, look at the fame among the commanders who fought in that battle. Oliver Howard, five stars. The Irish Brigade, Maher's got five stars. French just went up to five stars. Barnes has five stars. Five stars there. Dana, five. Every commander who was involved in that battle, with the exception of Adolf von Steinwehr uh, and Henry Bolin, has five stars among the brigade commanders. Uh, Israel Richardson, five stars. Uncle John Sedgwick, that's what they called him, Uncle John. Five stars, every one of them. And even uh, Edwin Sumner. So uh, famous, famous corps about now. So high honors there for the second corps. All right, out west, the Army of Mississippi has moved into Alabama. So Grant's Army of Tennessee is going to pursue while we send our, our Army of the Mississippi down to take Memphis. They do have another upgrade available to them, and I think we're going to do Bureau of Military Information. So let's take Memphis with Pope's Army. We're going to send Grant east toward Decatur, Alabama. See if we can engage and destroy his forces there. And then I think we'll start moving the Army of the Ohio south out of uh, Nashville, but mainly as a feint to keep him from moving north. Actually, on second thought, I'm looking, and the second corps of the Army of Mississippi has 14,000 men. This reserve corps, another 4,000. I feel like it's probably better if I send Don Carlos Buell east toward Knoxville to deal with them. All right, looks like Jackson is taking advantage of me being in Richmond, and he's going to go uh, north toward D or Washington, D.C. So we're going to split the Army of the Potomac. We're going to send the 1st and 4th Corps toward Jackson. We're going to try to sandwich him between uh, those Corps and the 3rd Corps. We've got the manpower to do this. I love these little monuments that show you where the battles were and what happened. How many men? See, it still says 40,000 men under Jackson, but he never got that many. Uh, that leaves just the second corps with 22,000 men holding Richmond at the moment. And there's Hill's corps here with 16,000. Maybe we'll try to force an engagement down in Petersburg with them. Is Jackson really going toward DC? The Fort Pickering garrison has fallen outside of Memphis and it looks like we've actually taken Memphis without much of a fight. Let's see where that puts us. See, Confederate national morale is still 75 and national support is still 100. We're going to need a lot more. That's because I ramped it up so high, I guess. We're going to need a whole lot more to drive them down. It's going to take a lot more than just taking Richmond, Memphis, and Nashville. We're going to have to destroy his army in the field. We're going to have to move into the south. We'll have to take Atlanta, Macon, try to take some of these other places. You know what? Honestly, maybe we send Grant. No, you know what? We'll keep pursuing the Army of Mississippi with Grant. We will take the Army of the Ohio to go try to take Vicksburg. 
Uh, but we're going to have to build up the Fort Pickering garrison first. So let's go ahead and add some men to hold to hold Memphis. And this is the trouble that Grant had to face, was that the further you go into the Confederacy, the deeper you go behind enemy lines, uh, the more men you need to leave behind to guard your supply lines. Uh, and that's a reality of the war. Uh, you can see I'm getting pretty low on available manpower. I'm going to lose use the last of my Ohio brigades uh, to hold Fort Pickering. And I think we'll go ahead and add some artillery there as well. And that's going to pretty well wipe us out there. In the meantime, let's bring the Mississippi River Squadron down. And they've actually got an available perk as well. Let's deal with that before we get into this fight. Uh, mortar boats. I like the idea. Or supply colliers might be really good too. Um, no, I like mortar boats because that's going to help us to shell Vicksburg. All right. Third Corps of the Army of Mississippi is in contact with the Mountain Department. I feel like this is going to be a huge problem for me. No, we've got a decent amount of men. So this is going to be the Battle of what? Gailey Bridge. That's an interesting name. I like it. Let's do this. All right, so we are going to have a, a slight advantage. We do have 1,200 wounded men already that are with us. Uh, a lot of mine is cavalry. That's those two cavalry units that I have, those two patron units. So we're on the Bull Run battlefield for this one, Battle of Gailey Br Bridge. Where are my forces? Oh, we're coming up from the south. So we just need to keep together, and we should be fine. Okay, so we've got our position on Henry Hill. and What I love about this, this is a battlefield I'm much more familiar with, having been there a few times, and this really, it looks like it. Like, it feels like uh, when you're standing on Henry Hill and you look down, they've got that long sloping valley that goes down to where the stone house is and then up to Matthews Hill on the other side, which you can see clearly from Henry Hill. Uh, it's just really cool to see it designed on the battlefield like this. I'm going to go ahead and get my... Uh, cavalry, that's uh, George Thomas's Suites, West Virginia first. And then Dimmick's 3rd North Carolina Mount Mounted Infantry. We'll go ahead and get them dismounted on that side. Our artillery's ready to go. Now we just need to hope that he's going to actually hit us here. Uh, we've got Robert Shank over here. They've already been in combat. Milroy's Brigade has as well. Okay, he's actually over east of the stone bridge because we just saw, saw this victory point turn red. Uh, and I know some people have complained in the message boards about that fact, but I actually like that that happens because it's almost like you're getting reports. Oh, you know, we've, we're getting reports of some movement over this way. You know, I don't know what's there or who's there. I just know that that's where an enemy force is. And that gives some direction in terms of what we want to do. We've got to get into a, uh, a single line here quickly before they get across this bridge. He's already across. All right, so we've got to be ready to fight. Let's go ahead and get into line. I'm not going to be able to stop him from getting across the bridge. I'm just not there in time. Where are these guys going? Oh, I guess that's probably where I told them to go. All right, we gotta get Patrick's battery up here and ready to go. All right, Shank, let's do this. All right, we're gonna shift suites over. We might actually be able to ford there if we wanted to, but I think we'll just bring Dimmick up this way. Should have given that as an advance order, so it'll happen instantly. You can hear the you can hear the bugle call when you do it that way. That's awesome. I love that.
Are these Napoleons? Yep. Come on, Milroy. I think the road was kind of throwing these guys off in terms of their formation. We're going to get sweets over. Over here. Is Dimmick not dismounted? I don't think he is. Let's get him dismounted. Oh, he's up on Shanks' flank. Because I can't get these guys to move. Okay, here comes the order. Gotta love those repeating carbines. Shanks is wrapping up, racking up the casualties fast. All right, how about we get Dimmick over here then? Beautiful. Drive him back, boys. Drive him back. Actually, casualties pretty even. You see all the extra wounded, but that's because I brought 1,200 wounded with me. So fairly even casualties so far. That's okay. All right. Third North Carolina, let's get you moved up. Where's he going? Is he trying to get around my flank? He's looking for another place to cross with Heinemann and Claiborne. That's smart. He's going to try to uh, keep me occupied with his artillery and woods brigade. So let's do this. Sorry, Dimmick. I know I just gave you those orders. Let's get the 3rd third, third North Carolina Mounted Infantry and let's bring them around. quickly as we can. I don't think we're going to beat them to Lewis's Ford, but at least we'll be prepared when they get there. Because that's definitely where they're going. Keeping an eye on Hyman's batteries because what I don't want to do is charge down into there and just get lit up. So I want to be careful about how quickly I do that. All right, get over there, boys. Yeah, he's going to be across easily before we get there. Just a little tricky. You know what, there's probably a way to slow down the, the map scroll speed. There is. Okay. I want to do that. Yeah, that's better. I 
know, Woods Brigade's getting torn up. Thomas, the Rock of Chickamauga. He's got three stars now for battle experience. You can see this officer has enough experience to lead his men reliably, reliably in most combat situations. Still no perk for the men, though. Yeah, he's already going to be across. We're still going to need to get a brigade up there. As long as they're not taking a lot of casualties from these batteries, we'll be okay. They're inflicting a lot. They're taking about a third of Heinemann's men out now. So now here's our opportunity. Let's mount up. And let's give a charge order. Give them the cold steel, boys. As soon as we see that change to a, a melee symbol, we'll charge in. I'm just waiting for the order to come in. Is an order coming in? There it is. I was just watching for this guy right here. Charge. Actually, we're going to do the same here. So now let's shift Milroy. He's taking some casualties, but let's get him shifted over here to help out. I want Dimmick up on this hill. on here guys get over there there we go let's watch this battery get wiped out now yes and there George Thomas gets his first perk assigned cold steel mounted rifles expert scouts vanguard what's vanguard do Lightning Brigade. I like that. Victory. Victory at the Battle of Gailey Bridge. Good news. Pretty equal casualties on each side. But I will definitely take that. A victory is a victory. So, All right. Glorious victory at the Battle of Gailey Bridge. General Wood loses face. So you can see the information there. Good job for General Fremont and his boys. Who's General Wood, and why did he lose face? Or is that not somebody on my side? That might be somebody on the other side. Yeah, General Wood was one of the Confederate units. So uh, so there's the situation. Let's go ahead and pause and see it. Let's. Uh, in fact, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and look at uh, the... It's actually... We have to go to this map here. We have to be zoomed out far enough. Look at the front lines map. So you can see we're pretty deep into West Virginia. We, we still have to take uh, all three of uh, Wheeling, Charleston, and I believe Grafton uh, in order to be able to get them to officially secede from Virginia. Uh, we're pushed down into Alabama, Mississippi. Uh, we've got most, we haven't even talked about the Army of the Southwest. We probably should get them moving. Uh, against the Army of the West, but the, the Army of the Southwest is the one where I'm having the attrition issue. They just keep losing all their men, so I have to keep pouring reinforcements in to keep them afloat. So uh, we're probably not going to be doing a whole lot of movement with them right now. Uh, at some point, we will down the road. But right now, we're, we're primarily just kind of keeping him from entering into Missouri. Uh, we want to try to deal with taking the Mississippi River. Uh, we'll try to push down against the Confederates in the Shenandoah Valley and pretty much drive them out of Virginia as much as possible. Uh, but right now, now that we've taken Richmond, uh, the focus is going to be destroying Confederate armies in Virginia rather than taking territory uh, and then pushing down to take uh, Vicksburg. And then we'll have to push up from New Orleans, etc. 
Uh, we'll see how that all that goes. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Drop a like if you would, and we'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Thanks for watching.